Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles 10 and Tech. I'm Carlos Casanova. I'm here with Shane Carlson and Hello. Kathleen Wilson. Hi, guys. Hi. And, uh, and today's guest, we have uh, Ashwini Almad. Thank you uh, for joining us, Ashwini. Hey, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So, Ashwini, you're, you're with a, uh, a security company called Endgame. And, uh, you know, it seems like every day, every week now, we have new breaches, new incidents. Uh, a lot of us that work in the space, we're, we're aware of the fact that this is, you know, the reality. This is our new life. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, sort of the industry, where we're at in terms of, you know, how, you know, how these breaches are coming about, but also obviously in terms of from Endgame's perspective, how are you looking at it slightly different than just, you know, hey, we got breached, we need to, you know, protect sort of this, you know, the old castle mentality is no longer uh, sufficient for what we're doing. Right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, I think one of the core philosophies here at Endgame, which we focus on is, uh, you know, compromise is inevitable. You will be compromised, but breaches can be stopped, right? That, that's one of the biggest things which we focus on. Uh, well, what we have seen is um, this whole proliferation of targeted attacks. Uh, just this year, we, we did a, a Forrester actually did a survey that 92% of the respondents had experienced at least one attack or, you know, or a data breach. Uh, and this is really a big number, right? I mean, uh, and most of these people uh, had about 40% of them had ha seen a daily breach, you know, like of, of, of targeted attacks. So what do we mean by targeted attacks, right? It's, of course, these attacks are sophisticated. They are very targeted. You know, the, the attacker reads and knows about your business. You know, they know about where you are at, what you're doing. They also know that, you know, um, you know whom, to tar what, whom to target, whether it's your CEO's laptop or whether it is a third-party vendor. It's not necessarily just the employee of that particular um, company itself. And uh, also, I think these attacks are basically not just one type, right? It's not a malware attack or it's not just an exploit-based attack or just a fileless attack, which a lot of our, uh, you know, our customers are facing these days. It's basically a, a multi-pronged, multi-vector attack. I I'll give you an example of Fin7, uh, which was an attack which some of the retail, you know, uh, some of the retail companies faced, uh, like Chipotle and a few others. And this attack had multiple components, right? It had uh, it had a malicious macro. Basically, it was a spear phishing campaign where someone sent an email with uh, an anonymous email ID. It had a malicious. It had a document which people would download, enable the malicious macro, and the macro would actually, uh, you know, launch uh, uh, launch and hide in the memory. So basically, this attack had zero malware. The, that's what that's the kind of sophistication which we are talking about now yeah I've definitely seen a rise in, in spear phishing campaigns uh, you know, very targeted a uh, number of customers I've worked with in the last couple of years have, have uh, seen a tremendous increase in that and, and they're not just targeting mm -hmm. kind of low-level employees you know hitting hundreds of people at a time they're picking you know three and four key individuals on the leadership team um, you know, coming up with some very sophisticated uh, spoofing of, of other uh, email addresses within the company uh, and making it look like it's an email coming from the CFO to the CEO, you know, asking for specific information, you know, and the documents are, in some cases, you know, a document that they harvested in, in some other form, either through another spear phishing campaign or something. So it's, it's very interesting to me to see the level of sophistication coming, uh, you know, into a lot of the corporate environments. Um, that, that are very, you know, it's easy to fool the humans that are involved in it. So what, what are you guys doing kind of beyond the technology to kind of help educate the customers that you work with that, you know, technology itself isn't enough? You know, the human factor is always going to be the kind of the soft entry point into any corporate environment. You know, I, I assume you guys do a lot in that realm to kind of get people, you know, focused and understanding that, you know, their people are kind of their most vulnerable asset. Absolutely. So I think one of the big things which, uh, you know, for, for at our end game, I think the, the technology basically focuses on the on stopping it at the earliest stages. But I think it's just it's not just about the technology. It's about the people and the processes. Right. So uh, we, we already know that there is this huge uh, skill gap in the industry. Uh, 
everybody is not able to hire uh, an expert from uh, a three letter agency or uh, you know they are not able to they they are having difficulty actually training their junior analysts themselves so i think the focus is the challenge which we have been thinking is basically uh, how do we provide the uh, the analyst who is actually stopping these attacks the ex the domain expertise as well as the simplicity for them to stop these at the earliest stages right i think that's um, automating their processes um, making it super simple uh, just to give you an example one of the things which endgame focuses on is building this um, chatbot which is which called artemis which combines the security domain expertise so that you don't really have to hire that expert uh, although they are necessary but you know you cannot hire you know it's very hard to re first of all hire them and to retain them but so one of the things which we focused on is building this domain expertise with natural language understanding to simply ask simple questions and get definitive answers uh, to stop attacks in time right just imagine in a, if you're living you know we're in a world where alexas and um series are helping us do their day to you know helping us reduce the complexity and you just ask alexa tell me the weather just imagine that in security if you're able to ask artemis artemis is there not petya ransomware in my environment helping the analyst actually scope through that faster not only reduces the Uh, you know the dependency on that experts again i'm i'm not saying you know, they are not needed but you know how do you make the junior analysts more uh, you know more, more productive as well as automating a ton of their processes as well you know prevention of course is the key core concept but we all understand that detection and response is a part of it too right i mean prevention is not a silver bullet we need to kind of move beyond that and how do we help the process right the, the mean time from detection all the way to response how do we shorten that i mean i know as industry we are uh, at what 80 days today but again it's 80 days too long and how do you actually make that seconds or minutes and get that resol- resolution uh, to not have breaches occur in your in, a, in an enterprise environment and and ashwini that's that's the thing that in 80 days sounds great compared to what it was a couple of years ago which i thought i believe was around 8 months so you know so we've made great strides but that's the danger when you combine that with what shane was just saying in this levels of sophistication when you see the the level of patience now it used to be a smash and grab you know bust down the front door the alarms go off the intrusion detection happens and they grab what they can and they run that's not the case anymore when you combine mm-hmm. that with what you were saying before also in terms of hey let's go after the partner not just the primary company and we can use that authenticated and credentialed you know tunnel in from this small partner into the big company you push mm-hmm. that all together You, the key there is what you're saying it's the resilience how quickly can you detect it is is ideal but how quickly can you do something about it is really where mm-hmm. the where the you know the money's going to be lost or gained right it's once you get it if it still takes you 3 months 6 months to do something that's unacceptable right. you know it's crazy yeah. that we, but it is 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 part of this just technological is it um just a social and an educational thing why haven't we you know i think most of us that have worked in the space have seen this why hasn't it been more on the forefront of you know how to how to get this you know down to a reasonable number it'll never be zero but yep. you know do you have a, a what's your feel on on why it's just you know really it's still at a, a very unacceptable stage right so i think you know uh, this is like i mean we're talking about the entire ecosystem now and uh, it's, it's, it's something to so that's okay you get three more minutes you can solve everything now <laughs> <laughs> it's something to step back and think about you know it's not just about the technology but also how do you actually improve the people and the process right because all that kind of uh, builds a security program you know it's it's uh, it's having the right people who are actually operating the technology having a kickass technology which actually stops uh, uh, things at the earlier stages and also the processes right I, i think um the, the and there is the other side of it where uh these these attackers they are innovating daily they are um you know using like they're cobbling together sophisticated technology and not sophisticated technology if you think about uh some of the ransomware attacks which have happened you know not a lot of them are sophisticated but the th- the, the, the thing being that they use the few components which were used by a nation state attacker i think the 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 part which uh 
organizations need to understand is you know everybody needs to stop uh, need, needs to protect themselves against nation state attackers because uh, you know those tools which were once available to them are now in the hands of criminal groups activists and others so i mean um, you know hiding in memory that's that's like uh, that's what that's what dnc you know, hack was all about hiding in memory for 6 months so i think the organizations need to start thinking about uh, you know first of all this is not going to happen to me is not true it's happening to you today period yeah. the the other, the the other thing is also around the fact that you know don't think about i mean tech technology uh, i mean if people process the great brothers when you're thinking about technology don't think about just one point solution i mean one of the biggest things which i hear a lot of feedback from ciso and again you know in, the, in that same forest survey uh, 71% of the ciso's are handling with eight or more technology just in the sock right so they are dealing with a com- complex environment of of their whole security program how do you actually focus on the entire the bigger scope of the problem not making it just malware focused or just exploit focused but think about how uh, you know the attack attacker uh, mindset is i mean one of the great good things which we reference at end game constantly is the mitre attack matrix it basically you know it's it's it, it's a year big year deep uh, uh attack matrix you know with with over uh, hundreds of te- techniques and tactics with the attacker uses and um it, you know the, our goal is to basically cover the entire depth and the breadth of it right focus on that as well as have organizations um this one you know a single a single unified platform which can help them uh stop threats at the earliest stages i think those are some of the key things which um, you know enterprises need to be um, i'm not saying that all of them but you know a lot of the we see that our customers at end game are are focused around targeted attacks you know our t- customers in banking uh, technology uh, in oil and gas uh, a lot of them nuclear power i mean they, they know that they are getting targeted by uh, china or by russia and uh, you know they need to stop that but the reality is that this is happen this could happen to to you know even a uh, ice vendor back in canada i mean it, it it has happened to them as well so you know thinking changing that mindset on um, targeted attacks uh, thinking about simplifying simplifying uh, you know not just looking at one one part or one piece of the attack but thinking of the broader scope of the attacker innovation and then also uh making it easy for not just the tools but the process itself for your uh security analyst who's dealing with this day in day out making it easier for them to stop these threats right that i think those are some of the key things which uh organizations i see are focusing today and need to continue to focus Ashwini, thank you very much for your time. Um, I had a couple closing statements because I think I understood. I think in today's world that um, security is no longer perimeter security. We need to start thinking about security and identity. I think uh, I, I really love how your organization has brought in some artificial intelligence via chatbots to help, you know, uh, lower skilled administrators address security concerns. And I think the other thing that I got back is, is that, you know, uh, attacks are inevitable and the the way you react to them will definitely um, show your resiliency in the plan of attack. So automation, education, and better tooling um, will help organizations deal with um, defense in depth and cybersecurity. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you Ashley. for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you.